afraid of and should be will keep going to state prison. But it's the criminals that we're just mad at as a society that will start going to local jails like this one. Let's take a look at what that means. We'll call this guy Chuck. Let's say he's a drug dealer, a convicted felon who would have gotten 12 years in state prison, but he's committed what's considered a non-violent, non-serious, and non-sex offense. So he's now known as an N3, and that means he's now headed to county jail, not prison, where he'll get four days credit for every two days he serves, meaning he could spend six years in county jail. But now a judge can instead give him a split sentence, for example, just two years in county jail and 10 years out under mandatory supervision. Also, before Chuck gets out of jail, he'll now get intervention services, job search training, treatment for substance abuse. Until now, less than 10% of inmates got re-entry training. Finally, Chuck will be supervised by the county when he gets out. When the law is fully implemented in three years, the county expects about 2,000 of these in threes like Chuck. The other main thing this law does is create a new status called post-release community supervision, which transfers most state felons over to county supervision. Let's call this woman Mary. Say she's been in state prison for vehicle theft, a non-violent, non-serious crime, and not a high-risk sex offense. She's now considered a post-release offender, or PRO. Now, when Mary gets released from state prison, she'll be transferred to the county where she committed the crime and then report to a county probation officer, not a state one. The county will assess her risk of committing a crime again. Is it high, medium, or low risk? If she's a high risk, she'll see her probation officer at least twice a month. And let's say during a surprise home visit, her probation officer finds drugs. Mary doesn't go to a state parole board. As a PRO, she goes before a county judge who can, if he or she wants, decide on flash incarceration, which is maybe 10 days in county jail. But Mary's never going back to state prison for this case. These changes all started on October 1st. Here are some important things to look for. First, the state is giving the county $25.1 million for this realignment effort. And the county doesn't exactly know how much this first year will actually cost, but the head of probation tells us they should have a better idea in about six months. Also, the county hopes to use options like GPS monitoring and home detention to keep more jail beds free. There are 5,600 jail beds. Will that be enough? And the governor has promised a constitutional amendment to protect funding for taking over this huge job. It hasn't happened yet. County leaders say they'll be worried until it does. There are still a lot of unknowns about AB 109. The one thing we do know is this will be a drastic change for the criminal justice system here in San Diego. And that is San Diego Explained. Thank you. Chicago law enforcement officials have